When I was a student, I was taught to prep your copper by removing all oxides and grease before applying a patina. Why? A patina is a surface treatment which is often unstable. A natural patina forms over time, taking days, years, decades, hundreds, or even thousands of years to form. The patina grabs hold, invading, eroding, and spreading across the metal surface, otherwise known as bite. Bite? Bite. As the patina forms, it etches into the surface of the metal, grabbing hold and biting onto it. The more bite a patina has, the better hold it will have on the metal. As a general rule, longer cook times will result in more bite, although cook times are only one factor in a patina's bite. Since we're creating a forced patina with relatively short cook times, removing all grease and oxides will help with patina bite. As a student, I did this by emmering the surface. Not a lot of fun, but very effective. I would recommend using a 220 emery grit pad or a sanding disc with a rotary tool. Be sure to remove the entire surface. Emmering has the added benefit of creating tiny grooves, which gives the patina something easy to bite onto, helping to stabilize the patina. Or so I was told. I never questioned it until now. I decided a little experiment was in order. So I cooked up six samples with six different copper preparation methods. So I gave my freshly emeried bit of copper four pumps of an ammonia salt solution and let cook for two hours in a paper towel fume chamber. And the results? Very good and even patina coverage. Depending on the object, it's not always possible to emery away oxides and grease. With three-dimensional objects, chemical removal of oxides and grease becomes necessary. Since I have access to a torch, when emery is not an option, heating and pickling the copper is my second favorite method of removing oxides and grease. Pickling? In the olden days, metalsmiths used to use hot vinegar to clean metal which they called pickling. Vinegar is mildly acidic. Given enough time, hot vinegar will remove oxides and grease. These days, vinegar has been replaced by Sparex No. 2, a mild granular acid mixed with water, which can be used cold or hot. Pickle is more effective hot. A crock pot is a good way to keep pickle hot, but never let your pickle boil, as the fumes can be nauseous. Whether you're pickling your copper or cooking your roast, never let your crock pot boil dry, as this could be a fire hazard. And it goes without saying, don't use the same crock pot to pickle your metal in that you cook your dinner in. Set your crock pot to its lowest setting. For every one cup of boiling hot water, add one tablespoon of Sparex number two. Stir until the Sparex is fully dissolved. If you don't have a crock pot, use a glass or a ceramic container. You'll also need to mix up a bit of pickle neutralizer. Don't forget, pickle is an acid. Mild, it's not going to melt your face off, but it will irritate skin and eyeballs. So anything which touches pickle must be rinsed in a baking soda water neutralizing rinse. For the next bit, you'll need a torch. Move the torch over the metal slowly and evenly. The copper will go through a series of color changes. You might see yellow, blue, green, and purples. Once the copper is turned black, look for a dull red under the black. At this point, the copper is hot enough. Allow the copper to cool for about 30 seconds. Quench in water and into the pickle it goes. Pickle until clean and rinse. What are those dark copper blotches? Just a bit of leftover copper oxides, but I like to call them copper poopies. You'll need to wipe the copper poopies off. The copper is now prepared for the patina. So I gave both samples four pumps of an ammonia salt solution and cooked for two hours in a paper towel fume chamber. Very good patina coverage on both samples. Since I already had some cold pickle, 
I thought I'd give it a test. So I pickled a bit of copper, without putting it to the torch first, for 12 hours. Then I gave it four pumps of an ammonia salt solution and cooked for two hours in a paper towel fume chamber. Hmm. Also, very good patina coverage. I thought I should try a grease and wax remover from a store. So I went down to my local hardware store and purchased and followed the manufacturer's directions. Yet again, very good patina coverage. Very interesting. I also cooked up a bit of copper with no preparations. Surprisingly, also very good patina coverage. But how stable are these patinas? There's only one way to find out, so I gave them a wash test. Hmm, none of the patinas survived the wash test completely intact. But that's okay. Ultimately, it's not about how much patina is not on the copper, but how much you like the patina which is on the copper. It's all about personal taste. I always tell my students, it's good if you like it. I personally do like patinas which have a bit of copper showing through. I think it gives it a bit of character. But if you prefer more coverage, as we've learned, Increased cook times will improve overall patina coverage. There are a number of different ways to seal your patina, including spray-on lacquers, paint-on lacquers, which can also be dipped in lacquers, and rub-on, rub-off waxes. As all patinas are unique, there's no one single sealer or sealer process that can seal them all. Keep in mind that all sealers will alter the patina in some way. Sometimes it will heighten colors, and sometimes it will remove colors. It's a gamble, but here are a few tips. Anytime you are working with sealers, whether they are spray-on or paint-on lacquers, or rub-on, rub-off waxes, be sure to do so in a well-ventilated room. Open up some doors and windows, or do it outside if you can, as the fumes can be harmful. Don't forget to wear protective eyewear. You don't want lacquer in your eyeballs. And always read and follow the manufacturer's directions. My go-to sealer for any new patina is spray. Spray sealers are available at your local hardware store or local art supply store or online and will come in matte, semi-gloss, and gloss. I prefer a slow approach to spray sealing many, 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 many thin layers with about a half an hour of dry time in between layers. How many? A minimum of three, but some patinas will require many, many more, as many as 15 or 20 layers. Experience will let you know how many layers a specific type of patina will require, but the crunchier or less stable a patina is, the more layers of sealer will be required to help stabilize it. There are many paint-on lacquers to choose from, available at your local jewelry supply shop, local hardware store, or online. But, surprisingly, clear nail polish works really nicely. I purchased mine from my local dollar store for a dollar. Two or three thin layers are best. More is not always better with paint-on lacquers. Too many layers can cause peeling. Paste waxes are a very traditional way to seal patinas. Liquid beeswax, super hard shell turtle wax, or my favorite, Renaissance wax polish, will all do the job quite nicely, but are not as hardy as spray or paint-on lacquers, and not so good for fragile or patinas with lots of nooks and crannies. Gently rub on with a dry soft cloth, allowed to dry for about five minutes. Then gently polish with a soft, dry cloth. As with spray lacquers, I like a minimum of three layers. When it comes to choosing the right sealer for your patina, experience will let you know what works best, otherwise known as trial and error. Not always fun, although 
If you don't want to fuss with different sealers, my advice is to stick with spray lacquers.